Hi, welcome to our video called The Fundamentals of Property Investing. Presented to today by Catherine Smith. I have a number of degrees in accounting, finance, tax, real estate and a few others. But more importantly, I'm a passionate property investor for over 20 years. I've bought and sold over 20 properties across all states of Australia. As usual, everything in life, we have to have a disclaimer that this is not meant to be personal financial advice or legal or accounting or tax or investment advice. You should get your own before you actually implement any of the strategies talked about to today. Having said that, let's have a look at, well, what is the opportunity? Why am I presenting to you today? In Australia, we still have a huge undersupply of, hou of housing. We still have record population growth forecasts. We are considered the lucky country still. And despite what's happening around the rest of the world, Australia continues to maintain economic growth. Our population is growing at the fastest rate in 200 years, and it's predicted to grow by over 350,000 per annum. And the housing shortfall of 32% across the nation simply is that the developers, the builders, can't keep up with demand. And all of these statistics I have gathered from reputable sources, which will be shown below. We also have rising rents in Australia. They continue to rise and rise and rise, making property a more and more attractive vehicle. They rise on average capital growth of 10% per annum across our capital cities. As I said, those statistics are coming from the ANZ Housing Snapshots, House Pricing Guide and the Real Estate Institute of Australia. So what are the opportunities again? There's also low vacancy rates across majority of Australia. Historically low interest rates compared with the last 45 years. What that means is very low barriers to entry. Having a rental property, investment property, will cost you very, very little. Population growth and housing demand are the strong fundamentals that create capital growth. How safe is property? Property does go up and down as the blue line shows, but there is a long-term trend which is at 10% per annum. You've probably heard the quote, housing prices in Australia double every seven to 10 years. That is what has been happening. And all of the economists say that this will happen again. There is no reason why it won't happen in Australia. But people say, what about the rest of the world? What about America? What about Greece, etc.? It's absolutely chalk and cheese to try and compare the two. There was a massive undersupply in Australia in contrast with a massive oversupply in America. Um, vacancy rates in Australia are very low, whereas in America there's suburbs that are empty. We simply have greater demand and not enough supply. Very different lending policies as well. Over there it's a, a crazy to see, but they actually gave loans to people who had no income and no jobs and no assets. That's the ninja loans. Um, it was amazing. Uh, in Australia they just simply don't do that. No jingle key lending. The other difference in America is interesting is that um, if you could not afford the mortgage anymore, you simply post the keys back to the bank and you walk away. They don't come after you for anything else. Doesn't happen in Australia, don't pay your mortgage, you're in serious trouble. So the housing shortage in Australia is set to worsen. What this graph here shows uh, is that this is the completions of dwellings which absolutely dropped in the GFC. Simply the builders and developers weren't getting enough finance to be able to complete dwellings. That has corrected a bit, this graph is 2010, has corrected a bit but the demand is still shooting through the roof and we have not caught up. The record population growth continues. Australia is actually poised to be the world's fastest growing nation with a rate of population growth even higher than India projected to grow at a rate of 65%, which is 65% above the global average. Slight error there. The population is already growing at the fastest rate since the post-war migration, and the baby boom saw it explode in the 50s and 60s. But how achievable is property investing? Of the one in 10 Australian taxpayers that invest in property, 60% earn less than 50,000. So what they're saying, only 1 in 10 Australians actually invest in property. That's a very low amount. Uh, I'd like to see that increase. But of those taxpayers, 60% of them earn less than $50,000. So if you're out there listening to this thinking, oh, I don't quite earn enough, have a look at that statistic. 85% of them earn less than 80000 So the majority of them are on reasonable wages. Property investing is not for the ultra-wealthy. Property investing is how you actually 
become ultra wealthy after you've done it for some time. So with historically low interest rates, it's achievable to own a quality brand new investment property in a high growth location for less than the cost of two cups of coffee a day. How necessary is it? Currently, 76% of Australians retire on less than 20,000 per annum. I cast, ask you to cast your mind to whether you could actually live on 20,000 per annum in retirement. It's basically borderline poverty level. 22% of Australians need to keep working after age 65. And the current average superannuation payout is 130,000 for males and 45,000 for females. They say that to have a comfortable lifestyle, you need at least 500,000 in your super at retirement. So that those figures there just don't make the grade. And people are living longer. Thanks to the wonders of modern technology, people are living into the 80s, 90s and running out of money when they get older. And the old age pension, if anybody follows anything on the politics, we know that it's going to continue to deteriorate. That currently there are five taxpayers for every retiree. By 2040, there's only going to be half that amount. What that means is there's not enough taxes being collected by those working to pay for those that are not. And the government makes no bones about this, that they don't believe they'll be able to afford the pension in years to come. So whether you end up part of that struggling majority or the wealthy minority depends on what you do or don't do right now. Whether you're young, middle of your life cycle or, or towards the end of your working career, it is not too late to make a change to your retirement future and end up hopefully one of the th only 3% of Australians that retire on more than 50,000 per annum. So let's have a quick look at how to make money from property. It's about using the power of leverage. It's about looking at rental income versus capital gain. And it's also about using equity to build a portfolio. Explaining in a little bit more detail, property simply makes your money work harder for you. If you have $30,000 invested in the bank at 5%, which you'd be lucky to get at the moment anyway, you make a, a 1,500 in interest for the year. You'll get taxed on that, so you'll lose a portion of it anyway. But if you use that same $30,000 and put it on a, as a deposit on an investment property, let's just say that a house only grows at 5%, which is extremely unlikely because the national average is 10%. But let's just compare apples with apples. You've now made a $15,000 capital gain. So that's almost like a worst case scenario. You've made 10 times more than just having that money in the bank. It's about using the power of leverage. That is the example of leverage, using the bank's money to make money for you. Let's also look at less of property, $350,000. It's renting, uh, sorry, the repayments are 435 a week and it's renting for 350. Very standard property that you could get um, in a lot of places in Australia at the moment. So you've got a shortfall there of $85 per week or $12 a day, two cups of coffee. Why would you want to lose $12 a day? This is why, because properties go up in value on average 10%. So in that year, uh, you must understand it doesn't go up every single year like that. It has its peaks and troughs. But on average, you'll make $30,000 capital growth per year on that property. And that's also before tax breaks. That $12 a day will come down once you take into account tax breaks. Okay, so let's have a look at capital growth. That property, 350,000, has gone up now, 385, and as the years go on, you'll actually notice it starts to go up by more than 35,000 per annum because of growth on growth, compounding growth. So after 10 years, that property is now worth 907,000, and you've made a capital gain of 557,000. We recommend all of our properties make their loans interest only. You're not paying them down. I can explain why in more detail. But basically, you're still going to owe 350000 in 10 years. Who cares? You've made $550,000 capital gain. The loan repayments, they stay the same, given interest rates stay roughly the same. The rents increase over time. So there becomes a break-even point. You start off negative, but it doesn't take long before you end up positive, by the end of that 10 year period, you're now positive cash flow of $262 a week.
So how many properties do you think you need to have a million dollars worth of properties? Actually three, or possibly less than that. If you had a million dollar property portfolio, and I could show the majority of people how you could achieve that um, with only, in only a few years. So it's the same example, I'm just started with three properties now instead of one. Still got your million dollar loan, started off negative $260 a week, so not everyone could do that to start with, but as I said, maybe in a three or four year period you could build up that portfolio. Positive cash flow in the 10 year period, you now got $790 a week positive cash flow, so that's potentially enough to actually uh, pay for your wage so you no longer have to work. But more importantly, you've now made a $1.5 million capital gain. The arrow there is where the positive, the properties actually turn cash flow positive. Most properties will turn cash flow positive um, by year four to five, but actually with the way interest rates are at the moment and rents increasing, it's possibly likely that it will happen around year two to three, meaning that you can then go and pick up another property to add to your portfolio. So the law of compounding, Albert Einstein describes it as mankind's greatest invention because it allows for a reliable, systemic accumulation of wealth. Property helps you do this. It is growing growth on growth on growth. So luck is what happens when preparation meets op opportunity. I've shown you opportunity here today, but you also need to take preparation. So how do you go on a property investing journey? I believe the number one important thing, which is what I focus on with clients, is the most important part of every business venture or property plan is getting the foundations, the structure right in the first place. Research your options, get advice, get it right before you begin because those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Setting up the structure, it's like building a house. Get your plans right, get your structure right. After you've set up your structure, you can then prepare a plan, then think about the finance, use a good mortgage broker who understands property investing before you even start looking at a property. So too many property spruikers will start throwing the property at you before you've actually got your structure set up. So if you'd like to know more about that, we can do a property portfolio review for you. where We look at how many properties you can buy, how much you can borrow. A lot of clients, the number one factor is how much it will cost you per week. How you should structure the purchase for tax purposes. Very important to speak to someone who can actually talk to about tax implications of property. Should it be your name, your spouse's name, company, trust, super funds? So that is $385, which includes an hour consultation about your plans. If you're interested, email myself, Catherine, at wfscanberra.com.au. You can also download our free report. The free report reveals the seven elements to building a successful property portfolio, property portfolio, and that once again is at our website, wfscanberra.com.au. We have a lot of other videos you can also consider watching, property versus shares, which is best, a very controversial topic, how to grow a property portfolio, investment strategies, land tax and properties, finance strategies tax and rental properties, tax and property development. They're more advanced, not for everybody to watch, um, but those who would un like to understand that, we have those available. Ownership structures, companies, trusts, super funds. Another, another very common one is the positive and ne versus negative gearing debate. And also how to build a property portfolio with a cas passive cash flow of 50,000 per annum with only 20,000 capital outlay. What about wealth coaching? You should seriously consider wealth coaching. A lot of clients really want to take the next step in their financial wealth accumulation, but they just don't know which way to go. Wealth coaching can help you with that, help you get started and help you take all the next steps. We have a few different packages, a basic breakthrough package, a holistic wealth through property package, and a holistic wealth through business package. If you'd like to know more, once again, contact myself or have a look at our website. Thank you for listening today. We have a saying at Holistic Financial Solutions, which is life is a challenge, meet it. Life is love, share it. Life is a dream, realize it. And life is a game, so play it. Have fun, have a good day, and hope you'll watch some of our other videos in this series.